thoughts. And you know, for somebody my age, I am 61. And uh, for somebody who's 61, you have a lot of dots in your life, although some dots fade after some time. So, but all these three people on stage, if you would believe it or not, uh, we are not connected to LinkedIn, but we are connected because I've had opportunities to meet with them sometime in their lives. Aaron will be talking about connecting the dots, tapping into the internet business. Faisal will be talking about detecting the dots, understanding business patterns. And Ms. Reed will be talking about defining the dots, understanding and securing traditional mass market. Okay, we will start with uh, Aaron, and Aaron will take us to how, by connecting the dots, how my taxi came about. Uh, which then, ha what happened was uh, in the 90s, right? In the 90s was when the internet really, really uh, exploded onto the scene. And uh, that's when you started seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of VC money coming out. Uh, and, and then you just pick uh, any letter, any word in the dictionary, pets.com or diapers.com or books.com or hotels.com. You know? All you needed was a domain name and a very thin uh, business plan and you could you could get money and then uh, and then this 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 wonderful wonderful world of uh, borderless uh, commerce uh, would suddenly open up which uh, most of the most of the case some cases was true but most of the time you still had to go back to the basics right i mean you still had uh, you needed distribution i found that this is something i really wanted to do because uh, I mean, you have to wake up in the morning, and uh, you want you you need to you need to want to go to work. You need to you know you don't want to dread going to work, and that's uh, I have been dreading going to work for the longest time, uh, and and this gave me new life, and I wanted to make sure that I did things differently from the past few failures, but you really can't do it alone. You really got to find people that you can work together with, who can complement your strength, right? You can't, you, can't, you can't be strong in everything, right? So there'll be someone who is stronger in finance, which I'm not. You know, there may be someone stronger even in tech, you know? I, I may know a bit of tech, but I'm nowhere compared to some of the, the, the like the really tech experts. So, so what we did was we took a problem and we reimagined it and we said, okay, how would I do this better? How would I improve the experience? And this is what you see in most internet or, or, or even mobile apps businesses. You look at you look at Airbnb, how they have completely reimagined the hotel in the street. Put on their glasses and then look at the booking and while well, the young guys are like oh, oh, oh. I mean they, they, they receive bookings through a smartphone, right? So um, I would say I'm an accidental entrepreneur uh, because um, I did not uh, publish a book with the aim of doing business. I was very well paid as an employee, I was doing well um, and um, the reason why I published the book is simply because I wanted to carve out a passive income. I buy properties because I like the rental income that I got every month, so I did the same for my books. Of course, at the back of my head, I was thinking that, you know, um, if the book does well, I could probably carve out a career out of it to become the so-called, to join one of the property guru gang, uh, what you call it in the market. But it wasn't the aim. The aim was passive income. So, of course, when um, my boss at that point of time, who I respect a lot, got fired after working for eight years for the same company, simply because of office politics, that accelerated my writing process because it took me one and a half year to write something which I threw completely and then six months to do a second draft. What I did was that I did viral marketing. I get people to write a testimonial okay, for my book. In return, for people who wrote those testimonial for my book, I actually buy them data rate and they get to spend about one hour with me and ask anything about properties. So my cost was about a ringgit 50 cent, they at the point of time, now I'm a seminar organizer. So when they do all this, so I started trying to understand why we, they are calling us. So basically to a certain extent, we are a bit like artists. We come here, we bring crowd, 
and then people listen to the property talk and hopefully the developer who want them to buy the property. What I do is that I advise people to on how to build a portfolio because I've done it. I speak from experience. So I think I can advise some, especially those who are just recently starting out. And then the I started manufacturing uh, with a friend. And two years later, she sold the business to me. And, and I realized it wasn't just about sewing buttons. It was more than that. It was getting orders and learning to do uh, selling and speaking and presenting, which is something that was quite difficult because I used this one said observation. What, the, what do people need? So this department store wanted me to make size 8 to size 12 apparel. But I stood outside the department store for two weeks before Christmas where there was such a lot of people going about. And I realized that most people were size 12 and above. And, and, 12 and, above. and you see, you need to observe what do people want in the factory. So a lot of times we don't know what is this thought that just suddenly just came out. It's not even something you spend time thinking about. Why don't you just give me a space and I will design a collection for you and I will make sure the I have a ability to take risks. And some of us are just not prepared to take risks. Maybe because we are too comfortable. We are people don't change if the the, the cost of change is higher than the potential reward that they can.